stereotypes for America and the logo. This is not Africa. This is the typical image you see of Africa, the Bushmen, the Maasai, the Pygmies. Right now, currently, they make up less than 0.1% of Africa's population. Historically, since pre-colonial times, less than 1%. Yet that's 99% of the images I saw growing up about Africa was those people. That is not the real Africa. This is the real Africa. This is a medieval king. He was ruler of a kingdom in West Africa, larger than Western Europe almost as large as the continental United States. This is a painting from the 14th century of the actual man, when he was the king. It had at least 12 governors, 30, 40 million people, it had famous universities. Here's his empire. Three people, an Arab, a North African, and a European, wrote extensively about this kingdom. The Syrian, the Arab, says its inhabitants are rich and live comfortably. The uh, North African, he traveled all around the world, China, India, East Africa, North Africa, uh, and finally to this kingdom. And he says, these people most abhor injustice, complete and general safety one knows throughout the land. He said, you don't have to worry about people killing you. You don't have to worry about people robbing you, completely destroying the stereotype that, oh, somehow black people are more inclined to commit crimes destroys that stereotype, but we never heard about this kingdom. In Timbuktu, you probably heard about Timbuktu, a European came down there and said more profit is made from the book trade than any other line of business. But of course we never heard about that. That's the real Africa. Ancient Ethiopia, this is a 16th century castle from Ethiopia. Ethiopia in ancient times was called the third most powerful kingdom by ancient writers, behind Rome and Persia, but ahead of China. They may have been, historians think, the first kingdom that actually built stone castles like this. It wasn't until about a thousand years later the Europeans learned of these castles when they came down for the Crusades. Also, the Ethiopians invented coffee, which I think a lot of us here can probably appreciate. I know I could. <laughs> they also were the first kingdom to convert to Christianity. These are stone churches from ancient times. Nubia, you may have heard of Nubia or Cush in the Bible, as it's often called. They were so powerful. They're in the present day Sudan, a little bit down in Uganda. They were so powerful that they defeated Roman, Greek, Persian, and Assyrian armies. They did, like Representative Nas said, they developed their own alphabet. And their alphabet included vowels, as the Egyptians did not include vowels, so it was actually more advanced than the Egyptians. And they also ruled over the largest kingdom ever in Africa when this man conquered Egypt. This man, Taharqa, was considered the, one of the top four military strategists of ancient times by an ancient Greek writer. Him and his family ruled over Egypt for roughly 100 years, restored its economy, restored, restored its system of temple building. And he was so beloved by the Egyptian people. When the Assyrians were going around conquering everybody, they pushed him and his family back to Nubia. The Egyptian people rallied and put this man back in place. That's how much he was loved. Like Representative Off says, black Africa is mentioned in the Bible quite a bit. Isaiah called Cush, or Nubia, a land of sailing ships, a people dreaded near and far, a nation strong and proud. That king that I just showed you, his name looms large in the Bible because when Israel was under attack from the Assyrians, he sent the Egyptian troops and the Nubian troops up into Israel and they defeated the Assyrians. Moses married a Cushite woman, and the Queen of Sheba may have been from Ethiopia. If you think maybe from the Arabian Peninsula, Peninsula, maybe from Ethiopia, we don't know. This is a 16th century city in Africa, uh, the Congo, drawn by a European. Obviously, you can see how vibrant Boston. Those little rows are all homes, little houses. Writing in Africa. There was all kinds of different, three kingdoms about their own systems of writing. And there was many other types of written communication all across black Africa. Just never hear about it. But here is what we see. These people. <laughs> the Bushmen. The Pygmies. Now you may think, well maybe Africa just has more than any other people. Maybe they have more than Asia, Europe, uh, South America. Well not quite. There are 200,000 Bushmen and Pygmies combined. 
There are currently white Europeans in the Scandinavian countries who are hunters and gatherers, the Sami people, who live in those small huts like that and are nomads. Yet we don't just focus on them and ignore the great European civilizations like Rome, Greece, Spain, England. But that's what we do with Africa and its bad history and its leading these false stereotypes that divide our nation. This is the real Africa with kings, castles, pyramids. Those are knights from West Africa. West Africa had knights. They didn't just put armor on themselves. They put armor on their horses. When the Europeans came down, they said, these guys are as good as we are. You'll never hear about that. And I'll just do this last slide real quick. Since we're talking about Africa, these are the contributions Africans made when they first came to America, the skill set that they brought. First of all, the Africans introduced rice. In West Africa, they grew rice. They knew how to cook rice. They knew how to store it. They knew how to clean it. They knew where to, where, they knew where to plant the rice. And it came to dominate life in South Carolina, as it was quoted back in the late 1600s and early 1700s. This man, Senke, you may remember the movie Amistad. Steven Spielberg wrote about the slave revolt. Well, guess what? The leader of that slave revolt was a rich rice farmer in West Africa. That was just one contribution right away that the Africans made. They also were expert cattle herdsmen. They were expert horsemen. That's why they were so good at it. In West Africa, like I showed you, they often rode horses, but you never hear about that. That's why they were so skilled at raising cattle, another contribution they made. Also, uh, they knew how to deal with alligators. The Europeans never dealt with anything like alligators, and they were killing their, they were killing their cattle, they were killing their chickens, killing all their farm animals. Well, the Africans, they dealt with crocodiles, so they knew exactly how to take care of them. And they helped build American society that way. Also, the, fi uh, the fishing skills, the casting techniques they brought to Europe also often supplanted the local Native Americans and Europeans in skill. They also introduced guinea corn and then sailing. In West Africa, you had all those rivers you had to navigate for trade. They had these big boats where you had to you know, ship all the goods from back and forth. When they come to America, they still have those skills. They didn't, they didn't lose those skills. So they would off, slaves actually would often be, often be auctioned off, and they would say, this man was an expert sailor in Africa. Africans provided the backbone of the navigation system in early America. And also they made major contributions in the form of basket making, box making, mats, and uh, pottery and that kind of thing. So that's just a, one example. And I'll show you a little, uh, some other slides later about how all groups have brought certain skills to make America what it is today, the greatest country in the world. Thank you. Well, thank you, Charles. I told you he was passionate and articulate, didn't I? And that's just a little snippet of what this guy knows and what he's researched. And so I encourage you, if you like what you heard, and quite frankly, wouldn't it have been nice, uh, I don't know about you, but if I'd have been taught those things in school, uh, would have given me a whole different outlook and a whole different belief structure and a whole different uh, set of questions to start asking in class. Uh, but if you're interested in hearing more, uh, much more in-depth. Uh, I know Charles does presentations around the state to various schools and organizations on this topic and can cover a wide variety of cultures and, and histories. Uh, I believe Charles, the, uh, the uh, website uh, to contact you is endingstereotypes.com, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, www.endingstereotypes.org.org. If you just type in ending stereotypes into Google, you Google it, uh, it'll pop right up. Google it.